I'm Angie Kahn's, and this is part six of Deep Dive into the character evolution of Daryl Dixon from The Walking Dead for post-show recaps. Today I'm going to be talking about the second half of season five, so if you haven't watched it yet, go away! Come back when you've watched it! Jeez. This part will focus on Alexandria and Daryl's reaction to the loss of Beth. In the aftermath of Beth's death, we see Daryl struggling with his need to isolate. We know that when Daryl experiences loss, he represses his pain and shifts into an almost robotic survival mode. We can see him fighting with himself because of this instinct. Daryl doesn't want to be close to the group. He opened himself up emotionally, gave himself to Beth, and was wounded so deeply from taking that risk. In the second half of season five, we see Daryl working with the group, but distinctly outside of it. Once again, it's Carol who tries to bring Daryl back. She insists on following him when he goes off looking for water so she can talk to him about Beth. I think she saved my life. She saved your life too, right? Carol knows intuitively that Beth pulled him back from his own darkness. She tells him he needs to let himself feel the loss or he'll get pulled back into that darkness. When out looking for Beth, Daryl wants Carol to fight and now she wants him to do the same. You're not dead. The season focuses on being pushed too far, past a point where the group can come back and live again in the real world, whatever that form takes. Bob tells Rick that this is a nightmare and nightmares end. Daryl goes off by himself. On his way, he finds a dead deer. We already know The Walking Dead uses deer as a symbol of innocence, and this is clearly referencing Beth. Daryl looks at the deer and has a moment of pained reflection. Daryl has a smoke sitting at the base of a tree. Like in the episode featuring Daryl and Carol, the cigarette is emphasizing them being consumed and turned to ash by the hellfire of the apocalyptic world. He burns his hand with the cigarette to make himself feel something. Only then can he cry about losing Beth. That night, Rick tells them that they need to behave as if they are the walking dead in order to survive. Daryl knows he can't do that anymore. He burned the house down, and he can't go back. Lay down. This line has many possible meanings. The episode is called Them, and here the most obvious meaning is the walkers. They are not like the walkers, and Daryl refuses to be. But Them can also refer to the bad people left in the world. Again and again, the season addresses the difference between good people and bad people a coward, and a leader, and Aaron specifically says that unlike Rick, Daryl can tell the difference. This is also foreshadowing how they are not like the Alexandrians. Daryl resists when Glenn offers him water. He doesn't want to be pulled into the group Darryl. again. He doesn't want to feel part of something bigger than himself, Darryl. part of the responsibility. Don't. Hey, we can make it together. But we can only make it together. This is a really important line because it frames everything that happens in Alexandria from this point. In the barn, Daryl is pacing like a caged animal in front of the door when the storm hits. The storm itself is like the nightmare they are living through, the emotional turmoil that he, Maggie, and Sasha are struggling through in this episode. When he sees a herd of walkers approaching the barn, he tightens the chain on the door and puts his back against it to hold it shut. It's not an accident that he doesn't ask for help. He is emotionally very much alone here. It's also not a coincidence that it's Maggie and Sasha who are next to get up and help him hold the door shut against the nightmare they are all three struggling to endure. The rest of the group wakes and they all work together to hold back the storm and the walkers within it. This is more foreshadowing of how they will behave from this point forward. Even through intense pain and suffering, they face the nightmare together. Inside the walls of Alexandria, Daryl is extremely uncomfortable. He's doing this for Carl and Judith, so they can have a roof over their heads. But this is not his idea of the real world. This is a fairy tale illusion. He refuses to shower and put on a costume like everybody else. Carol wants to wash his vest and angel wings, but he wants nothing to do with it. He sees through the pantomime. You look ridiculous. When Rick and Michonne agree to be constables, Daryl scoffs and walks off. 
It's like they're living in a castle under some sort of spell. The photos of Alexandria are like illustrations in a storybook. The fairy tale theme is emphasized again when Carol tells Sam the story of being tied to a tree while the monsters come to eat him alive. She tells the group she's been telling the Alexandrian stories since she got there. Why? Because these people are children and children like stories. The man in the red poncho that Aaron and Daryl are following is like Little Red Riding Hood who gets taken by the wolves. Again and again, Rick is trying to convince them to build a brick house before the big bad wolf comes and blows it down. Daryl's emotional state is brought home to us when Aaron and Daryl find a stray horse. The horse's coat and mane are exactly the same color as Daryl's hair. The longer they're out there, the more they become what they really are. He's talking about himself and the group. Who you truly are cannot be hidden when you have no walls to protect you. As Daryl approaches the horse, it becomes abundantly clear that the horse is a symbol of Daryl's spirit. Yeah, used to be somebody's, huh? Now you're just yours. Boo! Not gonna lie, this line broke my heart right in two. He gave himself to Beth and the group. He took a risk. Now it's back to loneliness and isolation. Sucks to be Daryl. Walkers approach and the horse spooks and runs. They find him trapped within a fenced area not unlike the walls of Alexandria. The horse is defenseless against the dangers within it. This too is how the group feels inside the walls. Unsafe. At risk. Aaron is devastated by the loss of the horse. He always ran. Like the horse, Daryl always runs. Daryl is starting to think he's misjudged Aaron. And he's starting to see that Aaron is an outsider too. You're trying to help him. Not happy sitting still. As prison Daryl, he was the one to go out on runs and find stragglers in need of safe haven. As if knowing this intuitively, Aaron asked Daryl to help him recruit for Alexandria. He even gives him a motorcycle, pulling him one step closer to going back to his prison Daryl identity. You do know the difference between a good person and a bad person. I've got nothing else to do. Daryl's biggest fear is that he will go back to being nobody. Nothing. You wanted me to try, right? I'm good. Like Carol, Aaron can see Daryl's heart. He knows the value of it. He knows that while on the surface he appears to be gruff and uncivilized, at his core he is pure and unwavering. There are some amazing themes explored in Season 5. The notion of group unity is something that is really emphasized. So what happens? I kill him. We kill him. Aaron says that's why he knew they were good people, because they looked after each other, even at their lowest point. Looks right. The idea of cowards versus heroes is raised many times in the last few episodes of season five. Again and again, we see the group putting their lives at risk to protect each other and the Alexandrians. God, you're really that much of a coward? Yes, I am. I told you I was. Even Eugene has his coming-of-age moment when he summons the courage to protect Tara and Glenn. Glenn very clearly says that cowards get people killed, and if you aren't willing to do what it takes, you have no business going outside the walls. Abraham has a similar experience when collecting steel with the construction crew. That's how it works with you? You leave people behind to die? This is why Rick freaks out over Pete's actions. Just like Glenn with Nicholas, the group understands how dangerous it is to all of them when people are not with them. Shane taught Rick that everyone needs to be on side, defending each other no matter what. As soon as members have their own agendas, their own ulterior motives, the whole group is in danger. This is what Rick is saying back in Alexandria. You pretend like you know when you don't! They need him, and he needs them to be in this together. We have to control who lives here. He doesn't want to sugarcoat it. They aren't children. He's not wearing his clean policeman costume. He's covered in walker blood because that is the real world. There are bad people coming, and they need to be ready for them. At last, Deanna sees this. Do it. Aaron understands it. He is not like the other members of Alexandria, and it's because he lives outside the walls. He won't let Daryl sacrifice himself. 
live or die, they do it together. Aaron realizes he needs to be strong like Daryl, to put people first. It's Aaron, of all people, who gives Daryl his life back, who restores Daryl's identity as the tracker and the rescuer, who gives him back purpose out of devastation. So I hope you liked the deep dive into the character evolution of Daryl Dixon. Be sure to send me your questions and comments. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitter. Until next time, don't look back.